Okay, hi, um, good evening everybody. Uh, for friends who are on our Better Trails Facebook, a uh, very good mo uh, evening. <laughs> a very good evening. <laughs> yeah, and also for uh, if you are watching uh, us from uh, the Marine Stewards uh, Facebook, also a very good uh, evening uh, to all of you. Uh, welcome to our third fireside chat. Uh, in the studio with us, in the office actually, <laughs> yeah, <not> the studio, <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, in the in office with us today we have uh, Fika. Uh, hi everyone. Yes, hi, yeah. uh, from Marine Steward. Yeah. Okay, so you, we have uh, Fika here, we also have um, uh, Mika, Mika here. <laughs> so if you are out at sea, you call her Mika. <laughs> if you are on the land, you yeah, are known as Fika. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, we have Fika here, she'll be uh, sharing with us about uh, sustainable uh, fishing. So our topic for today is actually um, <laughs> sustainable fishing for a healthy marine environment. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. So first thing first, maybe uh, we have in, in, in this very short forty-five mm. minutes, we yep. would like to hear. You know, probably the audience can also ask questions about fishing. Mm. So whether you are in a fishing community or whether you know you are, uh, you have seen um, um, how the anglers at the site do their uh, sports and you are maybe probably affected. I think here's a chance for the fishing community to redeem <laughs> yourself. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So whether the good or the bad, yeah. um, you have questions or if you have any comments, um, keep, uh, type them in the comments uh, below and then uh, we will address them when we are ready. Yep. Right? Sure. So for a start, maybe we will let M Mika? Yeah. Oh, sorry, we are on land. land. Let Pika. Pika. We will let Pika introduce um, herself maybe and sure. also to share with us what Marine Steward Singapore does yep. in uh, the fishing fishing community. Okay. Right? Sure. So, hi everyone. My name is Pika or people call me Mika. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I am the head of events for Marine Steward Singapore. So basically, uh, Marine Stewards is actually a ground-up non-profit initiative uh, actually to promote the sustainable use of marine resources and habitats through education and outreach. So basically, if you see in this picture, these are all, uh, this was our first meeting. Where we first have meeting. everyone in there and we were like exchanging views on how could be better and stuff like that. So basically, Yes. And, and those people, mm. they are actually anglers? Uh, it's actually mixtures. So oh. we have Sue, uh, which is the founder. Then we have um, anglers as well. Then we also have researchers. Mm. Then we also have people from MPUX. Right. Yeah, so these are the people who are quite um, supportive of... Uh, we are quite humble, you know, with their support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this is our goals. 
So basically, 90% of the global commercial fish stocks are either overfished or maxima, max, maximally are sustainably fished. Mm. So we see sustainable fishing as one of the most direct impacts of marine conservation, definitely, because we um, we have people fishing commercially, then we have anglers, but I think anglers uh, have just a little percentage of it, lah, but usually it's commercially where yes. they actually uh, have it uh, to, to have food on the table and stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Yep. So our mission here is to promote a healthy uh, fishing culture through sustainable fishing guidelines, education and outreach. So we have interesting people in our group where because fishing we have few types of fishing. Mm. We have fishing from shores, we have fishing from uh, boat, we call it deep sea. Deep sea. We have uh, egging which is um, fishing on uh, lures for uh, squid. Oh. Then we also have light light game like for your sela or your small fishes. Okay, a lot luring as well. <laughs> so, so at this point, I have to declare that you know I am not an angler myself. Yeah. So I totally I'm trying to catch. Okay? Yeah, sure, yeah. no problem. So, but I'm yeah. learning a lot uh, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, um, of course, you know we know that the fishing catch rates. You know, previously we used to caught you know big fishes. Suddenly, as time years goes by, suddenly the big fish is like it's gone, small. ah. Then now left small small fish. Uh -huh. We were like thinking, where has it gone to, ah? mm. You know. So that's when, you know, Sue came out with this idea that you know, uh, let's start doing it, lah. Mm. You know, yeah. So these are basically our founding members. We have Sue, as the uh, she's from SG Fishing Charter. Basically, she has a, a boat that goes out. Uh, charter for fishing then um, these are the few people who actually uh, mixture of anglers um, from mariners yeah mm. yep. then we also have our advisory panel uh, from James Cook University as well as uh, NUS Dr. Zihan and Dr. Neil as well as from RP we have Dr. Steven Dr. Paul and Daisuke Tyra so they are very interesting people yeah, because they very, do research right. on fishes. Mm. If you have small fishes or anything like that which is not common, mm. you can uh, always drop them a call and say if you want these fishes because they have a fish, uh, a fish library mm. in NUS which they actually wow. dis dissect all the fishes. So you're not just about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> do research. Yes, wow, correct. Okay, yep. okay. So there's a few things that they do. So of course our objective here, uh, we do sustainable fishing. We have sustainable fishing guidelines, education and outreach, environment awareness. Yep. Mm. So you measure yep. the fish. Yeah. So in this picture, um, yeah. So we have this kit, which we have this uh, measuring tape as well as a. Uh, uh, the species guidelines, which we have it in one bag, which you can actually uh, view it via our website. I think yeah. I, you bring the measuring tape along with you. <laughs> your yeah, shirt. this is on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> very convenient. Yeah, this is very convenient. Release. But uh, please, uh, if you all uh, use this, uh, don't put it on asing. Uh. Asing means your catfish. Oh, catfish okay. got... Um, Bob on the right, left, and the top. Oh. So must be careful. Remove first before you. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we have uh, very much of goals that we have. So we have 2020, 2 to 5 years, and 5 to 10 years time. But overall, our main thing is to actually sustain the fishes that we have here in local waters. So yeah, these are some of the interesting things that we have in 2020. We had uh, Fishing for the Future. So we had um, a lot of anglers that got together and uh, why more? Is that not working? Ah, okay. So you see here, these are all the people that came. So when mark the target, right, we have people from luring, from shore fishing, then from the uh, light salt games where for light fishes there we also, uh, which you see on your right hand side mm -hmm. then these are basically a lot of anglers here yeah and this was during an uh, yeah event on the uh, fishing for the future 2020 
Yeah. So these are all our volunteers. So happy to see that better trails. Yes. <laughs> our two volunteers. Yeah. yeah. I I love this um booth so much that they actually have the cigarette butts oh. in the bottle right. that I keep bringing it out. Ah, yo, fish don't throw ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure whether you know or whether um, the audience know that cigarette yeah. butt is actually the number one mm. uh, uh, common marine. Rubbish, trash. Marine oh, trash. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. How long does it take to dissolve? How long does it take to dissolve? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it depends on yep. the. We, we, I, I'm not scientific here, yeah. okay, mm. but it depends on where you. Uh, uh, the condition of the cigarette butts is. Ah. Yeah, but. Um, it takes. Do, do know that mm. uh, cigarette butts do. They do have like some plastic components. Ah. And also the toxins are yes, all, all in there. Correct. Yeah. So correct. When, when, it's let, when it's in the marine environment, mm. the fishes. Mm. Absorb all these fish uh, toxins. Wow, do they eat? Uh, do Sometimes they, they, they do, do they look at it like. Uh, they it's look food. yummy, it maybe look like food to them. <laughs> yeah, uh, the that's fish right. definitely is food for us. Yeah. So it all go back one round. Yeah, one cycle. Round. Okay. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, so this we had some games. Yeah. And of course, uh, the community engagement. We always have. A lot of them, uh, you know, where we want to talk about some, for example, like guidelines or some fishing, um, you know, like the nettings and stuff like that. We always involve the um, community. Mm. So at least we have more voices right. uh, to understand further what uh, do anglers actually really want to see. Mm. Yeah. Then, of course, we have the educating and raising awareness, uh, which uh, appeared in Straits Times. Yeah. Um. Then, uh, especially about the shovel nose, uh, yeah. Mm. So it can get. Uh, I think now not so much already, about in in markets. Uh, to be honest. Oh, as a food. <laughs> <laughs> I think because of one of the news that um, they actually uh managed to see um the head of the shovel nose in one of the markets. Oh. So I think um. It was brought up to the, um, you know, to the oh. environment, yeah, to the authority. So they actually, um, uh, they actually uh, really take note of it. They went to the stall, they check it out. You know, where do you guys get this from and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Be- okay, mm. so we want to talk about sustainable mm. fishing. Yep. And I see that uh, on this slide, there are a few articles about mm. uh, the shovel nose. Yeah. Uh, would you like to, you know, uh, explain a bit about this creature? What is this actually? It's, um, it's part of the shark species. Oh. Yeah, mm. part of it. Um, but um, it is already endangered because it's not it, in the least. It's already on a red, uh, red marker. Red mar- yeah, it's an under IUCN. Mm. If you can check through the website under IUCN, it's already on the red marker. Mm. So basically, previously we always see that you know they have this as delicacies, like from the head you have the collagen and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's yummy, but um, unfortunately it's already endangered. Um, for those, I I I don't really uh, blame anglers who keep them because most of them actually doesn't know that this is endangered yeah. because I went on a fishing trip on a boat trip so I did speak to the boatman I, I asked him do you know that uh, this is an endangered species so mm. he said I didn't know when was this mm. you know so uh, basically those are the people who are, who are not always on Facebook who are you know not really socially active mm. so they, they know that oh they go out bring charter go fishing but they don't really know that you know some species are endangered and we also have some sizes which are you know which we we kept that you know this is mature or non mature mm-hmm. so non mature usually we will re- uh, release it so basically on the boat uh I, I do have a boat so i hang the the species uh flips on the boat so whenever we have a fish then i'll have that tag then we put on the the measuring tape mm-hmm. and see okay just nice, 32, okay, <laughs> you can keep. Okay. Uh, but definitely if you have bigger, if it's already matured, if you don't eat it, you release it, mm. you know? Yeah, because I'm sure if the next person who catch it and it's really for, um, yeah, you know, for to have food on the table, they can keep it. Mm. Yeah, so if you don't really eat it, don't be uh, a bit greedy. Lah. <laughs> you know? oh. Especially when we see a lot of fish, 
Ah, so excited. Eh, this one can bring back, bring back, bring back, bring back. But if you don't eat it and you leave it froze on the fridge, yeah. then it's not right. so good already, right? Usually they want to eat it fresh, yeah. So if you don't, if you think that you don't need it, you can actually release it back, even though you know that you know it can be eaten or it can be given to someone else. So on yeah. this endangered uh, yeah. species, uh, you're saying that so uh, the older generation yeah. doesn't know because it wasn't mm. endangered at that point. Um. Actually, it's true. Maybe there was already endangered, but it's because from Marie Stewart's, then we start to know that, oh, this kind of species is, uh, uh, you know, endangered and is critically endangered. Critically endangered. Yeah, so basically, it is only a few left in the world. Mm. Yeah, so if you start eating it, mm. then you can't see them anymore. So to say that yeah. there, will, there is a greater need for uh, education, yes. awareness. I agree. You know, constantly updating Correct. people about, hey, you know, this is yes. endangered, this is becoming endangered. Yes. Right. Yeah. So okay. basically, that's the reason why Marine, St uh, Marine Stewart come in in this picture. Mm. We will do as much education and outreach as we can. But if, um, you know, anglers or public people, so you if you know about this, you can always share it with your friends, mm. your families, you know, it always starts with yourself yeah. first, then go to your family, you know, if you support, mm. it's very good. But if you don't support, you know, it takes some time for people to change, yes. yeah, to, to adapt to the new change. Yeah. We understand that. Yeah. But, you know, as but once you knew about um, it's good that you know you maintain it that mm. way. Especially yeah. if you love the sea, I think. Yeah. You know, you to, you know, see them. See them again again. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So basically, like you know, like your uh, when you go dive, you see those uh, big sharks, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you really want. Oh, so nice. So one day if you go dive, then you won't be able to see it. It's it's kind of like quite sad, lah. Because yeah. 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 So I'm a diver myself. Ah, um, yes, I am a diver myself yeah, as well. Yeah, so you really can connect to the sea. Yeah, so every yeah. time when we see this species, then we're oh, that's interesting. We will write on our book. Mm. But then when we start not seeing the species, then we get, eh, why ah? Yeah. Like, you know, we realize that lah. So same as fishing. Mm. Previously, we see that, oh, a lot of big fish. Now suddenly, you know, it becomes smaller and smaller. Yeah, smaller. I is it, is one thing good that you know you release also uh, there's reclamation in Singapore as well yeah. where they start to build um, marina, uh, marina <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> yeah something like that lah yeah, yeah. so uh, basically it could be the source of you know smaller fishes yeah, running but, away yeah. yeah but I think this is the thing about yeah. uh, development yes. as a as a nation as a yeah. country we. Mm. Cannot forego development. Yes, okay, correct. But I think Singapore has really done very well, very well in yeah. terms of like balancing mm. uh, nature yep. and uh, development. Yes, I yeah. agree. And I think now the big project is mm. in Tuas, mm. the recognition the of the, the wall. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I also know that the uh -huh. government has a uh, uh, relocate the mm. corals. Mm. So they do take these efforts and a yep. lot of this kind of project mm. goes into conservation. Yes. Yeah. I agree. So there's some specific place which um, they have the corals around. Mm. Uh, I think it's in one of the island, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, uh, sorry, I cannot remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 in one of the islands. Yeah. So basically, M Parks really, uh, you know, really take care of the corals and yeah. stuff like and that. And I also yeah. have to give a very big shout out to mm. uh, the MPA, the Maritime Port yeah. Authority. Mm. They are also uh, the uh, one of the agents that has been very active mm. in relocating, helping to relocate these the uh, corals. corals. Wow, yes. okay, good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so okay, so basically we also have anglers who now starting to release. Previously when we see um, Garupa, we were like, Wow, this sounds so good. Go home and cook and eat. Yeah. But now they see that, okay, maybe too small, they will release it back. Mm. Or maybe they think that I don't need it or I don't need it, I'll release it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's quite good. Lah. We see a lot of people, you know, releasing. Then we also have people who um, clear the trashes. Yeah, everyone works together. So... Uh, I think two days ago when I was at my boat, I actually saw a horseshoe crab right. dead. Ah. Then I saw some plastic, some shoes, 
water was polluted. So I think uh, we, we don't need to be a marine activist mm. to clear up. You just need to be human because you know. Well said. Yeah, <laughs> you just need to be human because when you, you it starts with you like, again, because if you start throwing your rubbish in, the water get p- polluted then all of the animals start to be dead. Right. right? So I think this topic ties in very nicely yeah. this month because yeah. of International Coastal Cleanup mm. Day. Uh, I think this is one of the biggest volunteer movements mm. around the world. Wow, that's so good. This particular day, I think the third um, Saturday of mm. September, that yeah. was also where the first time uh, Better Trails and Marine Stewards uh, had in touch with yes. uh, the cleanup yep. last year. Last year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's very, uh, yeah. come in very timely mm. to talk about marine yeah. rubbish. Mm. Um, how do you think um, the fishing communities, I mm. mean, um, not to judge, but yeah. uh, there has been, you know, a bad. Um, Connection mm. with anglers. Yep. Sometimes we see them at the wharf, sometimes mm. we see them at the piers, yep. and they leave behind uh, trash. Yep. Sometimes, uh, most of the times, I think secret parts, mm. um, uh, packaging, yep. and this kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. So, would you <laughs> stand up for them and say no? Okay. <laughs> so, basically, um, as an angler myself, uh, what I practice is I keep a trash bag or a reusable bag mm. in my bag whenever I go fishing, especially at the shore. Mm. So whatever drinks, whatever baits, you know, all the plasticky things, I will put it in that. Mm. When I go back, I'll throw it with me. So I believe most of the anglers at this point of time still do that. Mm. But some, the, the naughty ones, ones are. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time they didn't intend to throw yeah, the rubbish yes, in the sea. Yes. But it just because of convenience, probably they yes. sit there and the wind being yep. at the sea or yep. uh, uh, environment, the wind. It can, can, can be yeah, it can be possible as well. Sometimes they forget. They pack, 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 pack everything. Oh, maybe okay. rain. Mm. Oh, run, 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 forget the trash. Yeah. yeah. But um, what I realize now in our community is. Um, Ever since uh, the movement of, you know, throw your rigs, throw your rubbish, uh, even non-anglers mm. come forward. They see any hooks or anything on the floors. They pick it up, mm. you know, then they throw it. Some of it, they pick it up, take picture. Then maybe they post it in some fishing groups and say that, uh, guys, please be uh, more responsible. You know, after you fish, throw the hooks in the bin. You know, don't forget mm. that, you know, the beach, uh, the pubs is uh, being used by everybody. It's a shared facility. Yeah. yeah, so everyone needs to be very responsible. Mm. And this is very, very important because especially the hooks, you know, there's a lot of um, feedbacks that we got that, you know, uh, hooks was in the cat mouth, in the tummy, um, in the otters, cat. yes, in the cat. You know, the cat, you know, might swallow it. So sometimes... Sometimes it could be laid around anywhere that, you know, and sometimes those uh, hooks are with baits. Baits. So it smells, right? So for them, they think, ah, food. Ah. Yeah. So usually, um, we, uh, I mean, most of the anglers now, what they do is they remove the baits. Then after that, they roll it Mm -hmm. and put it in a bag before they throw it even in the bin. Ah. Yeah. So that's a proper way to do it. Because if you just take the rig and throw it in the bin, it can hurt the people who collect the bin as well. Mm. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, you really, if you take care of yourself, it's also the same that, you know, you need to take care of someone's safety as well yeah, at the same time. That's a very good, that's actually a very yeah. good advice uh, yeah. when dealing with shark, uh, especially the hooks. The right? hooks, yes. Yeah, so uh, we do a lot of coastal cleanup mm. and uh, we do come across uh, fishing gears, mm. uh, like the hook itself. Yeah. Mm. So that has always been one of the hazards yep. for us. So what we actually tell our volunteers yes. to do, right, yep. is if you see these kind of sharp objects, mm. um, you probably can find a uh, water bottle that, yep. that, you know, uh, that is you lying on the beach yes. or anywhere. Okay? You just Those put it plastic, in. Uh, just yeah. put it in, screw it up and yeah. throw, throw them in yep. the bin. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Uh. You know, uh, you know, we have the asamboy, uh, the small one. Uh. Uh, so uh, one oh, of the angler, <laughs> one of the uh. anglers suggested that, you know, you should keep like a small containers uh. like that. So your unused rigs, you cut off your rig, which is the line, then you keep the hooks in the bottle. Mm. 
Yeah, so they suggested that things like this, you know, can actually help not only on cats, otters and stuff like that, on humans as well. Because mm. when we walk, we can't see, right? Especially yes. on the grass patch. Yes. So you might accidentally hook it, especially kids. Yes. Yeah, so you know, beach, a lot of kids who like to run around, you know. Mm. We want to avoid the glasses, then now is the fishing hooks. So that's why now, I believe all of the anglers are starting to, uh, you know, Dis, uh, dispose their their rigs uh, one place you know uh, before they go back and stuff like that mm. yeah okay right so <laughs> trash <laughs> yeah so, uh, audience do you have any questions if you have uh, do type them in the comments do we have any questions coming in we have three okay um do you want to take questions now ah sure Let's sure <laughs> from the minimum how big of the fish size can be brought home by the fisherman. fisherman. Okay, very good question. So basically, you like to your arm? <laughs> okay, so there's a uh, certain species which I will show you later in our fishing guidelines, which you can actually get from Marine Stewards web page. So basically, that is really handy because now everyone holds their mobile phone. You can just go in through the uh, website, and you can actually scroll down the guidelines. Yeah, then if you have a uh, for marine seaweed t-shirt, we actually have a ruler with us which we can usually put the fish on or just put it beside to see or we also have a measuring tape which we actually bring with us every time when we go fish to actually uh, measure it. Yeah, I'll show you later in the uh, marine, uh, marine seaweed guidelines. Mm. So we also have a question that asks what are the ways of responsible fishing? Mm. Um, the, the ways of responsible fishing well yeah. basically other than what we have talked about yeah so for me being a responsible angler definitely uh, from sh actually there's a lot of fishing methods right so for me I start off with shore so being responsible um, you know uh, fishing can get uh, very dangerous as well because you need to cast out your 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 rods and you have leads in there mm. so basically you know be responsible before you cast out make sure that your right and left is clear at the back at the back right left and back is clear uh, you know because sometimes when you swing to the side or you swing from the top it can you know because you not only leads you have your rigs which is with your hooks uh. it can get on someone's shirt on you know mm. uh, so it's quite dangerous so um other than that uh, your rubbish lah, especially rubbish. yeah because we bring food we have a pack of baits then we have pack of drinks you know mm. so best is you know clear your trash right yep. yeah okay a uh, very interesting question when uh when the fishes are released mm. back into the sea uh, yep. do they get hurt injured mm. or and unable then after that you release and they are not able to survive okay so basically for this even before we release we are very for when we remove the hook mm. yeah some bulbs you know some uh, fishes are being hooked right at the side of the lips mm. you know and some are really deep inside so there is a device that is being used uh, to actually remove the the hook when it's deep inside mm. or at the side so I, I believe anglers are really very careful mm. when they want to release the fish especially those that they can't eat and stuff like that so yeah. Mm. Oh. Okay. So they actually can survive. They can definitely. So usually on my my side, what I did is on the boat, uh, I will put it on a live well. Uh, let it swim. Let it swim. Then after it swims, then you release it back oh, in the yes, sea. If you have a live well. Yes. <laughs> but if you don't have, it's okay. Mm. Uh, do it as quick as possible. It's always good if you have a cloth with you because it can get really hot. Oh. Put a cloth before you put the fish to remove the hooks then as soon as possible just release it back right. there is ways to release it which uh, Marine Seward will share with you guys soon in uh, our next post on how to release certain fishes and stuff like that stay tuned yeah stay tuned <laughs> uh, oh this one yeah. uh, the next question okay so this mm. talks about our lovely otters that was hooked by yep. the fishing line mm. I think, uh, uh, yeah I I I read a few cases about the otters. So basically, 
otters like to eat fishes, right? So uh, there's few possibilities. Mm. So basically, one of the possibility is um, they remove, you know, they, they, they just leave the hooks like that mm. on land. Mm. So when, you know, otters walk, then it can get hooked. Mm. Other way is, you know, when we fish out, then the line snapped, mm. right? When the line snapped, then maybe they were swimming and say, hey, you got fish on the hook. Then they bite it. Oh. Yeah. So there's two possibilities. Right. Yes. So either your line snap in the water, mm. then the otters come and eat, mm. or, you know, it's being left yeah. unattended. Yeah. So as much as possible, for me, if my line gets stuck mm. in the rocks while fishing on boat fishing, I would die, die bring it up. Mm. I will pull or whatsoever, so ensure that my hooks is you know is being removed from the water yeah. as much as possible and for the ground if let's say we're on the land we always always remind anglers throw your hooks properly yeah mm. other than otters like i said human is also endangered by it so it all starts with you be responsible mm. yeah I think not just the hook, sometimes yeah. the line get tangled, tangled. on the, the bird's uh, yeah. legs and mm. then trap them from flying. And mm. Yeah, there's, seen, there's few things. Seen quite a few of it. Yeah, so sometimes, yeah, they, like, like what I said, when they cast out, then their line gets snapped. So because when we cast out, it could be about 80 meters, 100 meters, it depends on how far they throw mm. on shore. So when it gets snapped, so uh, all of the, the, the lines will be in the water. So for me, if if that happens, if if it doesn't snap, you you can still save lah. Mm. If it snaps, then sadly you can't save that. I, but I, yeah, I know I feel oh, bad. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, I feel so bad. But yeah, we we do as much as possible to refrain that from happening. Yeah, there's yeah. always this thing called the personal best. Right? Yeah, I think correct. Once we, uh, once we do it, then we will be uh, able to, you know, save mm. a lot of uh, other creatures as well. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So how about circle hook, bubbler hook and micro bub hook? Okay, uh, not sure. Oh. This is your domain. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so basically, um, yeah, the circle hook, um, usually, you will always stick on the... What's a circle hook? Circle hook is the hook which is bigger. Uh. Okay, so hooks, we have a few sizes. Some are uh, bloodshot hooks, some are octopus hook, and basically the circle hook is, is quite big. Mm. It's quite big. So, uh, uh, when I was in South Africa fishing for shark, we actually used the circle hook mm. where it will only be attached nearer to the mouth and it's much easier to remove. So, when you remove, we take the fish and we release it back. Mm. So, uh, Marie Stewart will do our best to show you how to uh, remove the hook when we do some short videos. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have, yeah, actually we have a few bubblers and micro bub. So the bubblers one, of course, it's not so uh, sharp like the normal hooks because it's bubblers ma, at the top. Usually, like this, right? At the top, it doesn't have to hook on the second part. Oh. Yeah, so... Um, should I bring one? I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. No problem. Yeah. So, it's also a good idea, like, if you use this circle hook, bubbles and micro bub hook. Yeah, because it's so much easier to remove from a fish mm. and less harmful. Mm. Yes. Okay, mm. right. So talking about this uh, responsible mm. fishing, um, perhaps yeah. uh, would you like to share with us uh, what are some of the rules, not mm. say rules, uh, because I have seen people fishing near a uh, no fishing site, <laughs> literally just beside Ayo. no fishing. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm. so, so why is this no fishing zone or fishing mm. zone, how do yep. we even come about uh, having this kind of... Okay, uh, so basically, uh, maybe I use Labrador as an example. Mm. So Labrador jetty, uh. there's a jetty uh, and there's a T at the front of it. You can only fish at the T area, not at this area uh. because there's tidals that going in and out uh -huh. um, as well as some corals if I'm not wrong. Oh. So basically when they say no fishing, it could be corals, it could be tidals, then um, it could also be uh, something down there which 
they won't tell us but there's a reason why they put no fishing I'm there sure. <laughs> but uh, okay in the open sea yeah. I mm. don't I don't see as much okay, but in yeah. the reservoir mm. I think that's one big concern um, yep. when we have anglers mm. who fish at the reservoir is there a different kind of concern or reservoirs you mean fresh waters you fresh mean fresh waters yes. yeah actually in some of the reservoirs mm. there is a specific fishing area right. which you can go yeah, so just look out at where you can actually fish lah, you know. Mm. I'm sure, of course, people always say, when they say no fishing ah, that's where the lot of fish is there. Ah, I know. That's true. <laughs> actually, um, it's true lah. <laughs> Maybe because there's coral under there, you know, and fishes, you know, some fishes, they like coral areas and stuff like that. Mm. So, uh, best is to avoid because we don't really know what's really under there. You yeah. know, and also for your own safety. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, we were sharing about outdoor ethics yeah. and this kind of uh, uh, approach to mm. how we conduct our outdoor activities. Yeah. Um, I think if we really care mm. for the, um, the 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 sea, the mm. oceans, uh, we really should avoid. Even yeah. though I think that one or two fish more there, right? Mm. Yeah. I think it is not really not worth the entire ocean for the future. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say that um, yeah, stick to the zone? coming from <laughs> stay within um, the fishing zone and yeah, to be there. honest uh, it's good to stay within the zones because you know some uh, some no fishing zone like you say we have live corals mm. that's where we want fishes to be you know start uh, being yes. no healthy coral, no fish. yeah no coral no fish so you you give them some time to you know to to get around it and stuff like that mm. yeah so as much as possible do stay away lah of course, there's so many other fishes or I mean so many other places which you can fish. So uh, for your own safety, for the safety of the marine, you know, for the marine conservation or the marine, uh, like the corals and stuff like that. So maybe you can avoid at this point of time. Mm. There must be a reason why the board is there. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think that's also sometimes where the, the otters can will be a passage for them. For to them to swim. swim. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I recently saw that you guys came mm. up with some guidelines. Yes. Would you like to share about, is it re mm. uh, uh, regarding catch and release or mm. I, I saw some guidelines that yep. you came up with, maybe you want okay, to. Okay, sure. So basically, if you can see here, these are the recommended, uh, we, we have a recommended guidelines through marinestewards.org. So what you could do is you could see that you release juveniles, no take are basically your shovel nose ray, all take is your hybrid grouper. So whenever you fish and you see this hybrid grouper, take, take home, take, 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 because uh, they are invasive. Oh, they are invasive. Yes, correct. It invasive, correct. Yeah. So if you were to scroll down, uh, you can see that how you should be um, measuring your total length uh, for uh, normal fishes and as well as stingrays. Mm. So for stingrays is from one flap to another then for the normal fishes is from the tail to the uh, where the mouth is. Mm. So the standard, the fork length and the total length. Yeah, so if you go down, so basically these are the details of your maturity length. So if you fish on groupers, especially the orange uh, spotted groupers, the maturity length is 25 to 30 cm. So these are the mature lengths. Uh. Then, um, so different fish, mm, different lengths. Different, yeah. So this, this information, there comes the uh, Dr. Neil and Dr. Zehan from NUS and James Cook University. So basically, they do research. Mm. So this is what they are researching on. Wow. The length and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. So if you were to scroll down all the way, there you have the coral trout, you have the Malaba grouper, you have honeycomb grouper, uh, chocolate hen, then you have the blue line hen, cloudy grouper. So basically, you see that hybrid grouper. This is uh, the shape is like this. Mm. Uh, maturity length is still unknown, mm. but whenever you see this, bring home mm. because it is an invasive species. Okay, so we have snappers, the yummy fish. <laughs> the yummy yeah, fish. so the maturity length is about 50 cm, quite big. Lah. Mm. Yeah. So if you go down, then Spanish flag, this is quite common. Your Spanish flags, your Russell snappers, your golden snappers, 
then your bream, your sweet lips, your kachi. Yeah. Is all, mm. um, in Singapore waters? In Singapore? Yeah. In Singapore waters, Singapore yes. Waters. In Singapore waters, oh. yes. Yeah, so if you to scroll down, then you see pelagics like your GTs, your Golden Travelies, uh, African Papano. Some, um, usually uh, for GTs, most of them release it. Lah. Usually they, they take it as a game fish. Mm. So they just want to have the feel mm. of the fight. Usually for bigger fishes, mm. the bigger it is when we fight, the fish you know then after that we call it like a game fish mm. so what we do is we will release the hook carefully mm. then we will give a bit of water then we release it back mm. the bigger it is it doesn't taste good oh. <laughs> small fish. not really small but um on the maturity length yeah. yes right. then when you cook it tastes just nice mm. yeah too big it becomes the the, the texture become rubbery you know and a bit not nice, huh? <laughs> okay. okay, so when you scroll down, you, you can see all types of fishes. Um, and, and they can actually take reference from this list. Yes, huh? this is the one. Yeah. So whenever you go out fishing or you just want to know more what is the maturity length, you can always go in mm. and check from here. What type of fishes? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Um, mm. oh, sharks. Yeah, we have the sharks as well. So basically, uh, for sharks, uh, I don't really eat sharks because I'm a diver, so I already like promised that I won't eat shark, shark fins, anything. A promise. Yes. <laughs> this is uh, our our sompa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't really eat sharks. So mm. there is maturity length as well. So yeah, a lot of a lot of types of sharks. So rays, you know that Chauvinos ray. Uh, this one, whenever you get them at any sizes. Just release it. At any sizes. Any sizes. Small, big, medium. Just release it because it's endangered. endangered. Yep. So you have all of the fishes. Yep. So talking mm. about this invasive uh, yep. uh, uh, species, mm. um, do you, uh, because coming from the leave no trace approach, yep. right, okay, that's what we are. Yeah. That's where we learn our stuff. Mm. Um, when you use gears that are used before in the marine, the, mm. the, the ocean or the sea environment, yep. okay, uh, our suggestion is that you know wash all this gear yes. okay, before you go to a reservoir or you know vice versa. Mm. Yeah. So I think uh, one of the uh, if if you know hearing from you and yep. this is what fishing is about, yep. I would see uh, that you could possibly be introducing a species. If not, need not be fish. Yep. It could be some muscles or mm. clams, that kind mm. of thing that may get stuck to your gear. Yes, and when yeah. you use it in another place, yep. you possibly could bring, could it, bring it there. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think usually when we when usually when we were to drop our gears, for example, mm. so when you fish then you would when you you reel back then you see this uh, rod or reel already so old, then you start to see all the muscles uh -huh. start start to Usually, what we'll do is we will dispose of lah. Mm. Yeah, these are usually when found, uh, when found. Wow. But usually for anglers who, uh, anglers really look after their, uh, their, their gears. their gears because it's expensive. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, but it's all it's a very good um, it's a very good advice that you should actually wash first and stuff like that even before they go. Yeah, that's a very spot. that's very good advice. Right, yeah. yeah, I will inform my kakis, <laughs> my fishing kakis. <laughs> the whole list of practice mm. uh, under yeah. the leave no trace for fishing. Ah, uh, do you have this on your website uh, or something no, like we that? Don't, we we don't have uh, this mm. uh, yet. Uh, yeah. we have a whole set of activities. Ah, oh, that's yeah. so cool. We, will go, uh, uh, we we see how we can share with yeah, you. Yeah, okay. And incorporate this into your fishing community. That okay, would be very good. That sure, would be sure. Good. That's a very good idea. Mm. It's a mixture of every everything more to adventure fishing your 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 etiquettes and stuff like that yes, is very and, good and this talks about yep. how you should travel to your mm. camping ground or oh, sorry your fishing ground, fishing ground. <laughs> yeah and how you should dispose of your ways yes uh, even like baits and yep. all that kind of mm. thing yeah that's a good so, idea so while we are not uh, anglers ourselves yeah. Okay, but I think when we combine our knowledge, yeah. we should be able to come up with something. something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but that is, of course, not mm. all. Yep. Um,
we should continuously, mm. you know, uh, seek education. Yes, you know, outreach. Yes. Yeah. And when we go out there, I mm. think the ocean is for everybody. True. So, like I said, it's a shared facilities. Mm. So, everything starts from you. If your you are you know if you don't support, it's fine. But you know you just need to be human. Like I said. <laughs> You know, yes. throwing rubbish, polluting, you don't need to be activist, a marine activist, you just need to be human. Because, mm. you know, you save fishes, you know, when you, do, when you don't throw rubbish, then, you know, the sea is not polluted, the rubbish is not there, the fish, the, the sea turtles can swim freely, you know? Yeah. 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 So, um, is there any questions from, yeah, we have, right, do we, uh, from the comments? Ah. What is your approach when you see some of the anglers who are fishing at the restricted zone of our <laughs> reservoir? Maybe you go first. Wow. Ah, <laughs> uh, I perspire. I want to answer. <laughs> Maybe if not, I should try. Maybe you go ahead first. <laughs> right. So um, we are um, educators yes. under the No Trace mm. uh, uh, program. Yes. So. Uh, one of the uh, topic that we talk about is the authority of resource mm. where um, we are we don't carry you know a summon card mm. authority card and say that hey you give me your mm, mm. so we don't do that okay so yeah. i think first thing first we start off with uh, the benefit of the doubt give yeah. the person the benefit of the yes. doubt okay and approach them nicely and mm. ask mm. you know uh, try to strike a conversation yep. hey mm. um why are you doing your uh, uh, fishing mm. um How's your catch? Mm. Okay, but you realize that you know uh, start yeah. to start to go along that yep. line. Yeah. Mm. So I think while we do not need the authority all the time yes. to come in, mm. okay, um, we give them the benefit of the doubt that yep. they may not know no. that this is a restricted zone. Yeah. True. So basically, um, we also need to lead by example. Mm. For example, if you see people keeping a shovel nose ray, yeah. you can't literally like, hey, stop, you know, yes. it's endangered. No, yes. it's ed you, you need to tell them, you need to lead by example. For example, you see people throwing rubbish, you don't scold them for throwing rubbish. Yeah. You pick it up and say, hey, you know, there's a bin nearby. You can oh. just, you know, drop your trash in the bin. Yes. Yeah, so I always feel that uh, your approach needs to be not so you, you you can't really scold them like maybe benefit out of like what you said yes. maybe they don't know that the, the place you can't fish yes. you know and um but once you know of course you don't repeat it lah yeah mm. <laughs> and i think the, the, the point is really to yeah. uh, be able to convince them mm. uh, and explain to them yes. uh, why that they should not be fishing here mm. it could be the, like you say the yeah. coral yes uh, the titles and stuff okay. like that yeah but but if they do turn hostile, <laughs> we should not continue our conversation. conversation. Yeah, and correct. And we should just leave things to the other Yes. Yep. So just leave it that way. Like, you know, I know sometimes, I mean, as an angler myself, you know, um, of course, if you were you being asked, you know, hey, you cannot fish here. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't tell them the reason, of course, people will get angry. Yes. Yeah. Correct. But of course, when you say nicely, you lead by example. Say, "Hey, I'm also fishing. Shall we fish at the you know the, ah, the place that we can fish? Come, right. let's go together. You know, you can always make friends. You can always yes. bring them together and say, hey, maybe that that side but much better than here. Mm. You know, you can always talk to them. Mm. Know how making friends. Yes, yep. very good advice. Mm. Yeah. Do we have another questions? Yeah. Don't have. Okay. All right. So, well, if not, then um, would you have any last word for our audience? <laughs> Uh, okay. People who are already fishing or people who are starting to fish to or fish. Who are thinking of starting fishing. to fish. Okay, so I just want to let you guys know that fishing is a very healthy sport or hobby. You know, it's just that um, you need to remind yourself to be very responsible. Don't throw your hooks, your lines, um, your rubbish uh, whenever you go fishing or you know if, but if you happen to see if non-anglers if you happen to see any hooks uh, lying around you know um, do help us as well you know and inform us that you know you shouldn't be littering you know and just help us to throw it yeah so because you know sometimes we have people who always complain hey you know anglers you shouldn't do that but you know they they just leave the hook like that Mm. If you if you take picture and post, it's also okay. It's mm. a awareness.
yeah it's not being sabot you know it's awareness so my um my uh, advice is you know fishing is a healthy sport it's from you, you can start you know your kids to, to, to go fishing, you know, it's a very healthy hobby. You go out, enjoy the sun while fishing, you get fish. Yeah, so it's very healthy and <laughs> yeah, just, just, just be responsible at the same time. Mm, healthy yeah. for yourself, healthy yeah. for keep the ocean healthy yeah, as, as well. well. Yeah, right, so thank you, uh, Mika, uh, sorry, Mika. <laughs> Uh, Thank you so much tonight. for inviting and, us. Yeah, yeah, and sharing um uh, quite a bit of uh, tips yep. for people like me who mm. doesn't know uh, much. Okay, yep. but I think we should stay in touch. Yep. Um, um, Facebook on Marine yeah. Stewards. Yeah, Marine Steward Facebook. You can actually follow us on Marine Stewards. So we also have some competition going on. So if you can tell us more about why uh marine uh, conservation is important while fishing, you can stand a chance to win a nine hundred dollar worth of a yacht trip. Wow. With your friends, go wow. to our page. <laughs> okay, so thank you, all for thank us. you, everybody. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>